one of the most important and sometimes most overlooked pieces of gear that you carry with you, on you, and around you is your medical gear. And in today's video, we're going to look at a kit that I've put together that I keep in my vehicle and that I take with me to help out in an emergency medical situation. So stick around. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is probably not going to be a very popular video. Um, the videos that always get a lot of views are, of course, survival kits and bug out bags and bushcraft gear and knives and things like that. But the first aid kit or the trauma kit is such an important piece of gear if you are um, preparing for emergency. And it doesn't matter um, who you are or what activities you do. Mountain biker, backpacker, hiker, um, survivalist, bushcrafter, whatever category you fall into, you need to have um, different levels of first aid and trauma kits in your gear. And the kit that we're going to look at today is something that I put together specifically to carry in my vehicle. Um, it is a kit that um, actually hangs behind my head of the driver's seat of my truck, um, but it's a kit that I can grab um, in an emergency and give aid to someone if something happens. I can also grab it and take it with me if I'm going to, let's say, an event where I know that there's a possibility that someone could get hurt, like um, a shooting event, a bushcraft event, something like that where you know, there's going to be um, either guns or knives or axes. Those are all, you know, those all can lend themselves to some kind of possibility of injury. Um, it happens, accidents happen, and having some kind of kit that you can grab and take with you um, is so important. Now, <clears throat> the bag that I've chosen um, is from Condor, and this is their deployment bag. Um, and there's a reason why I chose this bag specifically. Um, I have been trying out a lot of different um, dedicated first aid pouches. Um, and a lot of them have really fallen short for me because either they're too small or they have too much, they're, they're too specific in their organization that they don't fit a lot of the more oddball, bigger um, bandages and first aid gear that I have, and I think that most people have. So I kind of went back and started looking um, at kits uh, from when I was in search and rescue. And, you know, one thing that kind of stood out is that for first aid gear, a lot of times we didn't have pouches, but we had bags. We had dedicated first aid bags, uh, more of a shoulder bag um, that was bigger and could carry a lot more gear. And it was just a lot easier to get in and out of. So uh, since this is a vehicle-based uh, first aid slash trauma kit, uh, the bag uh, made sense. And... So far, um, since I've put this together and I've been carrying it in my vehicle for the past three or four months, um, I have really liked it um, just because of um, how it hangs in the back of my truck. Um, it's very visible. It's very easy to get in and out of. It's easy to get off the back of my headrest. Um, it's not very complex. And uh, it's, it's a bag that doesn't break the bank. So there's some budget value to this as well. So... Condor um, is really stepped up their game with their gear. Uh, the sewing has become very good. Uh, their stuff is very well designed. And this deployment bag is an awesome piece of kit. Um, comes in a variety of colors, but they do have it in the red, which was perfect for this application. So just real quick, let's go over the bag itself. And then I'm going to show you the contents that I chose. So the bag itself uh, is a molly bag. There are molly attachments that come with it, so you could actually attach this to a larger backpack. It also comes with the shoulder strap, um, which is fantastic. That's what I wanted. Um, so 
you have a couple different ways of carrying this or attaching it to things. Um, if you have a Molly uh, panel on the back of your vehicle, on the back seat of your vehicle, you could attach it that way. Um, I just hang this with the strap on the headrest and it works perfectly. And you'll see that in one of the, the videos in here. Um, has a good grab handle, so it's very easy to, to grab. Fastex, Fastex style buckles, that opens it up. You have one main compartment, then you have a front compartment, and then two side compartments. Um, and then there's molly and webbing on the sides and on the front. And then on the front of mine, since there was webbing on here, I attached a tourniquet pouch, perfect place for it. Um, up front and center, visible, easy to get to, easy to identify. So that is the bag. Now, before we get into contents on this bag, let's talk real quick about training. This is crucial. Um, you can have all the gear in the world, but if you do not have training and have a lot of training, um, it is going to be detrimental. Now, my background, as many of you know, um, I was in search and rescue for many years. Um, so being part of a volunteer group, um, it, there was a lot of requirements and certifications that came up all the time. Uh, basic first aid was one of them, CPR. And then we also got into more specific types of first aid, um, uh, wilderness first aid, which is a, a different um, animal in itself. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit different because you are preparing for a situation where, you're, where the um, aid coming from an ambulance or a hospital uh, may not come or may be very far out. So wilderness is, it has a different uh, mindset um, and then also we did a lot of disaster type first aid triage um, treating uh, you know mass casualty incidents things like that because that was part of, of our mo as well so um, this bag is set up for my level of training um, i am not an emt um, so i cannot do things such as airways uh, stuff like that so my kit is kind of built around what I know how to do. Um, you certainly can add items, and then if someone who has a higher level of training is there, they can take over. But, you know, I think in most cases, they're going to probably have their own stuff. So the first thing on the outside, I've got my tourniquet. This is a cat tourniquet. It is in a pouch that is very easily accessible. You can pull that out and start working with it. My suggestion is to have a couple of these. Um, have one for practice, practice on yourself, practice on others, uh, different size people, children, women, men, uh, different appendages, legs, arms, all that, so you can get used to it. Um, and then have your uh, unused ones staged and ready to go. So that's on the outside of the bag keep a small light pen so I can check dilation of eyes. Also keep a small sharpie that way I can mark my tourniquet or I can mark other items. I can write on the patient directly with instructions or things that I've done so that when EMTs roll up they know what's going on in case I have to leave scene or whatever. Um, inside here I've got two uh, compressed gauze bandages. North American Rescue. Uh, just a small pack of uh, bandage or band aids and some steri strips, things like that, just for minor wounds. So I have different levels of treatment. This is trauma, but this also could be just general first aid. I have a face shield to protect myself. I have a large tube of triple antibiotic that's going to be for minor wounds. Um, a couple of gloves. These are from North American Rescue as well. Now, I've had comments before uh, that I shouldn't be carrying black gloves because it's harder to see the blood. Um, I don't think that's an issue. I'm not doing field surgery. Um, I can see the blood. Uh, you can see the blood. It's, 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 I don't think it's that big of an issue. Um, but I keep these in the wrapper because it protects them. It keeps them compressed and together and protected. It's very easy just to rip this paper and pull the glove out. 
Uh, I'm not really losing a lot of time doing that. Um, and you're going to want to take the time to make sure that you are protected. So two gloves at least in your kit. This side pouch, I'm carrying two sets of quick clock. So if I have to uh, treat um, a couple of different wounds on one person or a couple different people, I have more than just one quick clot. Um, sometimes with the smaller kits, you only can carry one of everything, and then that becomes a problem if you've got a larger accident scene happening. Of course, EMT shears there. And here, I have a very large... A compression bandage uh, with the elastic on the outside so I can pull this apart stick this over a wound wrap it and that's going to control the bleeding um, very quickly so it's nice to have that on the outside easily accessible and on the inside the big pouch I've just got a miscellaneous bag that is all wrapped up so I can just grab and pull this out of the way a um, couple different size needles uh, so you can do decompression, but also administer meds um, in case someone doesn't have a needle like a diabetic. Tape, um, alcohol prep pads, and then of course um, several different sizes of gauze pad so I can make bandages. But also, which, which I think is a very important item, is a biohazard bag to put all of that um stuff that you just got done using into a bag so it's clearly marked and people don't um, get that blood or those fluids all over themselves it contains it and then it can be thrown away properly so once that comes out now i can get into these bigger items which are uh, frankly more important um, first one is of course a chest seal this is from north american rescue as well What's nice about this one is it does clearly have directions in the back. So, you know, review those, make yourself familiar with them before you put them in your kit. So then when you do have to use it, you know what you're doing. Keep a couple of different um, emergency dressings. Um, these are very similar to the one that's on the outside of the bag, but they're just different sizes, different companies. Um, but they are very similar. Um, but as you can see, I'm carrying multiples of these because what I'm anticipating is, is a lot of bleeding. And I want to control that bleeding very quickly and not mess around with a lot of little gauze pads. I want to pull some big bandages out and apply quickly and apply pressure. That way when um, EMTs come, um, everything is under control. And in the back here, just two more things. I've got a, um, an eye shield that has a bandage built into it. This is for eye injuries, never know. And then a Mylar blanket to help the patient stay warm so they don't go into shock. That's important. Um, having something like this can be very important in your kit. It doesn't take up a lot of space. We all should have some type of Mylar blanket just for that reason. All right, as you can see, there is not a huge amount of stuff in this kit, but there are very, there's some very critical items, um, some big items um, that I, I cannot get into a smaller kit. That's why I like the size of this particular bag for a vehicle-based kit. It works perfectly, gives me lots of room so I can carry these big bandages. Um, like I said before, you know, your job is to control the situation, control bleeding, get that patient stabilized as much as possible, keep them comfortable um, until EMTs show up and take over. Um, because I don't have that level of training, but they do, so I'm going to help um, in an incident. Um, could be an accident alongside the road. It could be someone at the gun range who accidentally shoots their foot off. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so having a kit like this with you that you can grab and go, take with you to different events, um, different scenarios, I think is so important. Um, I'm going to have links down below in my Amazon store for some of this stuff um, to give you at least ideas of what you can get if you're interested in any of these things. Um, like I said, this Condor bag I think is fantastic just for this application, especially in the red color. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, 
but all that stuff will be down below. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope this helped you out. Think about this stuff. Get out there. Get your first aid training. Build a first aid kit. Have it ready to go. And that way, you can be the difference when someone is injured. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.